All right, what is happening, everybody? Joseph coming your way. So, over the weekend, I got a PB, River City Girls. I broke the 60-minute barrier with a time of 57 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, I don't know why the quality is really bad, but it is, whatever, who cares? Um, and so what I'm going to do is, this is going to be my very first... Uh, very first full run breakdown. It'll be a series of videos I do for all the runs I do. And yeah, so this is also going up on my YouTube channel. Um, so if you want to watch that on YouTube, feel, right, feel, feel free to go right ahead and do that. I'm going to be doing videos like this for every game that I speed run, all eight of them. Uh, and like I said, and keep saying, uh, for the remainder of this quarter of the year, up until April, I will be doing uh, this, River City Girls, and Final Fantasy IX. Uh, even though I got a massive PB, I, I couldn't record it live because I was with I was in a hotel room. Uh, uh, just, you know, uh, I was at a bowling tournament and I was in my boy's hotel room, so I, didn't, I wasn't able to go live because hotel Wi-Fi is worse than the Wi-Fi in my apartment. <laughs> so, yeah. I had to record it locally, I had to pre-record it, uh, but, and I tend to speedrun before I do, before I go bowl, because it's just a thing I do, I like doing it. Anyways, so, let's start the breakdown. Okay, so, the new game category uh, means you just start a fresh new game, so, from nothing, so, and, let me start here with the character selection, most of players of this game will select Masako. Uh, Masako, there's no real difference between Masako and Kyoko as far as I have seen. Uh, maybe Masako's, uh, maybe Masako's um, juggle is a little easier, but I don't really notice a difference between the two at all. In fact, uh, I'd say that Kyoko's flying attacks are actually a little more accurate than uh, Masako. That's just what I've experienced. So I'm using Kyoko for this. Um, can you switch between the two? I don't think it's a good idea, but it's an option, I suppose. I wouldn't. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And I start this with a five second timer. Uh, I count down from five seconds just because I have to switch between, uh, I have to switch between five split and the game and that also sh that also kind of runs the clock a few seconds uh whenever i split uh but i mean it's whatever uh if it really was competitive and i w probably will be uh since this is not a difficult run at all you gotta know a whole bunch of splits uh skips rather but uh that's neither here nor there this run utilizes uh Every easy skip, there's like skips that are just like academic and very easy. And there's a whole bunch that are really difficult. I'll walk through those as we go through them. Uh, and this run only does like one like, I guess, difficult-ish uh, skip. Uh, it ignores the other ones. And that's my plan for optimizing my times in this game is to get to a level where I... Am so good at getting a good time in this without skips that when I start executing them, I'll be a contender for the world record. Like that's that's the goal uh, before April, uh, and I'm pretty sure I can get a time in under 55, uh, even playing the way I do in this run. So let's go. So five, four, three, two, one, and go. And there we go. All the scene stuff just gets skipped. Whatever. So when you first fight the first few enemies, uh, the general strategy is to hit them three times, to hit them in the air, and then while they're in the air, uh, hit them with a uh, heavy attack. So you can see it doing that there, and. A real way you can save time is to just measure when how weak your enemies are and this way you could just land like two weak shots and then another 
like uh, heavy shot there. So after entering, after exiting that room, you should have seven dollars and twenty-five cents. If you do not, you have to get all that money in before leaving that room. This is very important in the early part of the run. In the early part of this run, you need all the money you can get because just because of the stuff you'll be buying. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I get caught a little bit, caught up in between these uh, schoolboys. Um, those are the first real enemies you fight are just schoolboys and schoolgirls. The schoolboys do an attack where uh, they can stun you uh, if they throw dirt in your face. You can't block that either. Um, the schoolgirls just have like just crazy attacks. If you go near that trash can, you'll get a tutorial pop-up uh, with weapons. Same with that door. Uh, you'll get a tutorial pop-up thing saying that um, you can't enter here yet. If you destroy a Sabu statue, which is that thing you see above on the desk, uh, you'll also get a tutorial thing for that. So, uh, One fast strat that I uh, like to do is... Uh, Land a flying kick and um, and land on the ground as I hit the enemy. Uh, that's pretty important. Three schoolgirls there and two schoolboys. You should have 22, 25 after, uh, before uh, confronting Hasabe and Mommy and Mommy, rather. And now the cheerleader room. Yeah. So cheerleaders are they're tricky. Uh, they can cartwheel right through you and then appear behind you. See, I'm making a mistake there. Um, if an enemy is blocking, just don't confront them. Like, wait for them to stop blocking. So you should have 3625 after that room. And here, what I usually do here is I lure that crowd of schoolgirls and cheerleaders. This way, they don't follow me into that room. Because they'll do that, and then you'll get knocked around, and it really really runs the clock so these enemies are what I call pomps because they got these little pompadour little haircuts uh, and there's nothing special to them they just uh, have they have pretty quick attacks compared to um, other enemies like they'll go out they'll kick you out of nowhere so that's what I was talking about about the flying attack so if you land on the ground as you hit the enemies like really good so you should have 4750 out of that room and you don't need to fight this one and here's the last uh lock screen before fighting mizuzu you get a schoolgirl a schoolboy i think uh a few ch i think a one cheerleader and one pomp and then some more schoolboys and schoolgirls so yeah see right there i did the right thing there so that schoolgirl was blocking so I just ran to the cheerleader because the cheerleader leader wasn't blocking. So that's a much better strategy. It wastes less time. Also, enemies will telegraph most of their attacks. Like that pomp just like rushed up towards me. So I knew that he was going to try and fight and try and hit me with a kick. So I avoided it the best I could. Same with that cheerleader there, the uh, cartwheel. When these cheerleaders cartwheel, they will often try to hit you from behind. So you can use that to your advantage. So yeah, you should have $65 before fighting Mizuzu. 65 even. So if you do not have that amount, you have to go back and get it. So each boss in this game has three phases. Um, Mizuzu, her first phase, she'll just you know, try to hit you. So you can Put her down like usual, like that. Uh, the fastest runners will actually do three strong attacks. They're not strong, strong, and weak like I just did. And at the beginning of each different phase, Mizuza will try to run into. You can prevent that and skip that from uh, heading into a pillar. Now what I'm doing here is I'm canceling Mizuzu's uh, special attack, which is to jump in the air and try and squash you. So after she hits the ground like that, you quickly run to her and uh, you can interrupt that uh, special move. Um, and like I said, and this, I, I was too early there, so she hit, uh, Mizuzu hit me there. So that costs some time, as you can tell. And there I just let myself get hit because 
Well, she's almost done anyways. So, and that's Mizuzu. And as you can see, I had to just pause a little bit and split. If you're very new to this run, let me pause here. If you're very new to this run, as you can see, Mizuzu's waterfall tears here. If you're very new to this run, you take your first like few attempts. Um, you want to aim for under seven minutes. Uh, if you're intermediate, like I am, uh, you want to get under six. Uh, top runners will get in between uh, 445 and uh, 515. Um, Jolton, the world record holder, I think has a four. I think a 430 something Mizuzu. So, and Jolton's uh, run of this, the world record, is I think 48 and some change. So, yeah. So right now I'm on like a, we'll say like a 52 minute pace, uh, provided I've done all, this, all the skips, which I don't do all the skips in this. I, bar I barely do a few. Nice little interrupt there. The stomp, you want to do the stomp on any enemy who's floored, unless there's another enemy who's standing, in which, in that case, you would just go to the enemy who is standing. Same with grabs. Um, do not execute grabs if you can help it. Unless you know uh, an attack associated with that grab is going to uh, KO an enemy. Like if you know, if you can feel out the enemy's health and be like, okay, if I grab this enemy and I throw it, if I throw the enemy, I'll know it'll kill it. Like, And this outside... It has a new enemy called the what I call the wrestler. Yeah. Wrestlers are just very aggressive and they hit really hard. And there's Godai. So we're gonna do the first, last, and only Godai quest uh, in this run, which is to buy a burger for him at Merv's, but buy a double burger. So here's the first fasties shop. So you want to buy and eat a thing of potato snaps. You want to buy and drink a turbo juice. You want to buy and keep another turbo juice. The turbo juice will... And in the first dojo shop, you want to get the volleyball set for Kyoko. And you want to get the uh, nutcracker for Misako. The turbo juice will give you maximum speed for 20 seconds. Um, you don't use it throughout the entire run. You use it just for the first half. Uh, the reason why that is is because... Fast Ease is the only place that sells these turbo juices, so it would be a real big waste of time to go all the way back to Crosstown to go to Fast Ease to buy more turbo juices just so you can run real fast. Also, the speed uh, boost you get from the turbo juices does not translate to doing skips properly late game, so that's why I don't use them. So, get that volleyball set. And this is why it's so important to have all this money because money is extremely tight here. If you have less than $102, you will not be able to do this uh, menu, this shop. So before entering Merv's Burgers, make sure you have at least $102. If that means you have to take out that cheerleader uh, on the bottom there before entering the store, uh, just if you have like uh, 99 bucks or something like that, then you're gonna have to do that and it's gonna have to run and you're gonna have to run the clock. So buy and eat each of these. And keep a Merv double for uh, Godai, which I almost didn't do, and I went ahead and did it. So at the end of it, you will have 50 cents. And then take the bus back to cross town to the school gate. Yeah. Then give Godai the burger. You get some XP and money, and it also, also opens up the rest of the quest for you, which is now to go to the mall. So you take the bus back to where you came from, and you go to the mall. So now we're introduced to juggling. So juggling takes some practice. You know, it, like with, uh, it's very similar to gutters in uh, punch out, where if you can, you can make the uh, opponent raise his guard and then you can hit him in the stomach. Uh, it's similar to that in that it's a rhythmic kind of timing. So here's how to do it. You hit enemies, 
I usually hit them, tw and the more consistent you are, the better. So I do, I make sure to always do, sometimes I slip up and I don't do it, and that's what runs a clock for me. You do two weak attacks, and then you execute the, uh, the volleyball set or the nutcracker, depending on who you have. And then you walk to the enemy, you hit him again, this, this bumps him back up into the air, and then you buffer another volleyball set and this cheerleader is about to hit me, and she didn't, but I attempted to block anyways because most enemies will uh, be aggressive when they, uh, when they try to attack you the first time, so I'm expecting this cheerleader to do something else. But she didn't, so I'm like, alright, cool, let me go ahead and try and juggle her. Yeah. Sometimes with buffering the volleyball set slash nutcracker, you can do it too early or too late. It's like I said, it's rhythmic timing. And being very, very careful and patient with the cheerleaders. Those flying kicks they do is ridiculous. It's ideal to get them up against the wall like that. Oh, and here's another new enemy, the, uh, I affectionately call it the Blart. As in Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> so like the schoolboys, the Blarts can also uh, stun you. So there's a good juggle right there. And the faster your, enemy, your, your player moves, the easier it will be to uh, execute the juggle. Because you'll be able to move to the enemies faster. By the way, if you get hit with something that stuns you, and then you get hit by it again, it'll snap you out of the stun. So, keep that in mind. And there we go. And we'll go back to... Oh, see, I, I messed up there. You don't want to go back to, to fasties quite yet. So, the Pattinson skip. So... The Pattinson skip is the most difficult skip to do in this entire run. Um, and really, if you want to get a uh, world record, you have to execute it. There's, there's, no, you, there's no choice. You, ha you must execute it. Uh, uh, Jolton does it in uh, his or their uh, world record run. I think the other top runners also do it. To do it, you have to go to that little plat that little tile like where I'm at right now, and you have to kind of you have to kind of sneak into this while it's still open uh, before the uh, screen locks, and then when you get into Pattinson's house and get and get the key from Pattinson, it'll have the uh, it'll have the lock on the screen, but it won't matter because. You just have that single objective of getting the dude's key. So, uh, I attempted it, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> As a schoolgirl friggin' lands a shot on me. And lands another shot on me. But I, but I parried it, which is pretty cool. Block parries are pretty random in this game. Um, you really need some good timing in order to really land them. Uh. Again, enemies do telegraph um, their strikes, so you can easily know when they're going to attack you. Yeah, fighting these blarts, um, I like to just get them up against the wall and just juggle them that way. Much easier than to chase them because you're not your speed isn't like perfect yet, so you'll hit them too far sometimes. If you have the turbo, well, and you need the turbo juice in order to do the Pattinson skip. If you don't have it, you'll have to jump through all this like what I'm doing. That's neither here nor there. If you get caught by Pattinson, uh, you'll lose about seven or eight seconds. Got more schoolboys, schoolgirls, and pumps here. Just this one schoolboy, this one schoolgirl, and uh, I think three pumps. Now pick up the weapon there and hit both enemies with it because I knew that the schoolboy was about to get KO'd. Um, weapons in this game are actually, sometimes they're useful, sometimes they're not useful. Uh, and you're going to see that in the Hibari split. 
uh, how useful they can actually be when it comes to keeping enemies away from you as well as uh, taking them out just as easily and quickly as you could by juggling them. But 90% of the time against uh, generic thugs, enemies, uh, you're going to want to juggle them. There's a pump and a wrestler, you can just go ahead and get rid of them. Now Fasties Menu 2 is just like the first one, only you get and use one turbo juice and you get and keep another turbo juice. At this point, money isn't really an issue. Um, it still kind of is, depending on what kind of special moves you want to do. And I kind of messed up there, because I'm holding X while uh, running. So here's one easy skip you can do. I call it the, I call this pair of skips the LL Cool Skips. Because you pretty much just draw an L with your character. So from the, uh, from the entrance to the mall, you just go down, and you go to the right. That's all. And stand at the bottom of the screen, and you will uh, skip uh, two lock screens. Uh, there. Same here. Just go down, and go to the right, and draw that L, and you will have skipped a lock screen right there. Now here, you need a little bit over a hundred bucks to get uh, all these T's, which give you good stats. So, and then you talk to Hiroshi again, and after talking to Hiroshi, you you save and quit. This not only prevents a lock screen after talking to Hiroshi. But it also puts you at the entrance, uh, it puts you it puts you back where you came in from, and that also saves time. That's another easy skip you can do. And yeah, if you open your menu uh, after getting like a mission or something like that, after you start a mission, you'll get a map screen. So a way to avoid that is to go on a different screen, and then you won't get the map. Uh, that can, you can only do that in certain uh, areas, or certain uh, instances, or whatever. So, And now you have to fight this lock screen. Uh, Two-handed weapons you should never ever, you should probably never use. There is one instance where it is kind of maybe helpful to use a trash can and attack enemies with it, but I, it's really like, it's not... It's just something I'm experimenting with, and probably would be easier if I just juggled. So what I'm doing here is a, a, is a technique I'm calling uh, rearranging furniture. So I put the trash can and the bench in the corner. This way I'm not grabbing them when I'm attacking these enemies. Um, and don't worry, uh, the only enemy I've ever seen use any weapons at all uh, are pumps who can use uh, baseball bats. Otherwise, no one else, no enemies can use weapons. It's not like the original River City Ransom. In Amy's Candy, you want to get the Melon Mints. Gives you agility up plus, uh, plus one. And now you can just walk out of the mall like it's nothing. So, And now we're off to fight Yamada. Crossing this can be kind of annoying because that schoolgirl can hit you. But it's whatever. Now Yamada. Yamada is like the first like real difficulty spike of this game whether you're playing casually or as a speed game um Yamada likes to teleport and likes to use use his 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 dark arts against you um to juggle him you want to uh, hit him twice and then do the volleyball set slash nutcracker and then juggle him like any other uh thug uh you won't be able to, to, to juggle him as much as a normal enemy, but it should still do a considerable amount of damage to him. And then what you want to happen is you want Yamada to teleport behind you. This way you can get behind him and whip his ass again, like, just like so. Yeah, and see, yeah. So what happens if he teleports in front of you? 
that's when the clock gets run out because now now your mom is going to do some stupid bullshit so we're entering the second phase and the second phase Yamada is going to try to uh, is going to attempt to use uh, you know the dark arts and he's going to attempt to what's it called <laughs> summon like three objects surrounding him you can interrupt this uh, but you need to have pretty good timing I don't think I do it here. No, I do not. But you can hit him right before he does that and prevent him from uh from uh having those objects around him. One of which is food, so is a health refill, so you can get a health refill if you want. I mean, sometimes it's actually preferable. See, I messed up there, but it didn't matter because I interrupted something else he was going to do. And he countered me. I got the uh, I got the health refill anyways, so I got lucky during this fight. But it was not a good fight. It's now the third phase where he does dark arts too. This is where he draws a little line in the ground, and if and he hits you with it, it does a lot of damage. You can interrupt this as well. And I think I do that here, and I do. But it's very tricky. If you're new to the run, don't worry about getting it. If you're new to the run and you have a lot of uh, health or anything, then you'll be fine either way. So, and it's funny, I actually finished the fight by knocking Yamada off of the uh, off of the building. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I think it still saved time too. Now we're on to Hibari. Now Hibari, there's a couple of opportunities. You can take to split, to skip stuff. Now from Yamada, you got the love letter. So the love letter and the makeup kit can do a lot more, can increase the damage you do to uh, male and female thugs and enemies in general. Uh, if you tr if you try to equip it on that one screen, the construction site, you'll get uh, you'll run the clock. You'll waste a few seconds because you'll get the map telling you where to go but if you go into this screen you'll uh, miss that so yeah now I use the turbo juice but I think in this run I forget to equip the uh, accessories until later so you use that turbo juice go into here and now so from here on you have uh, some choices when it comes to uh, skills I typically just get the spin kick or the hop knee for uh, Misaka. Um, some other runners like to get special attacks and stuff. Uh, it's never worked out for me. Um, I don't. It, it's never really improved my times as much. Uh, so it's really a matter of preference. But for but for certain, get the spin kick or the hop knee if you're playing as Misaka. And get the ice cream cone, ice cream cone from Cream Dream. You could have gotten that earlier. I get it uh, while heading to Hibari. And now I want to buy and keep three turbo juices at fast ease, and that's the last time we'll ever go to fast ease. You're going to be using those after. You're going to be using those way later. So refuse the temptation and just start using them. Now here you fight nothing but Blarts, and. The first thing you want to do is rearrange the furniture, but doing that can be difficult because these blarts get pretty annoying. Once you've rearranged the furniture, now you want to get the blarts all in the, together in a group and just juggle the crap out of them. Yeah, I missed I messed that one up bad. And again, if they're dizzy, don't like grab them. Uh, it's way better to just continue the juggle. Unless... You know that that dizzied enemy will go down in like one shot after you grab them, whether it's a strong, whether it's a little weak hit or a, or a throw. If you've grabbed an enemy, um, whether they're begging for help or they're dizzy, the uh, the weak attack does uh, just a little punch to the gut, and a strong attack does uh, a uh, what's it called 
we'll throw them. So, all right, I want to actually go back a little bit. So here's Uptown. So there's a skip you can do here, and high-level runners will do it. What you do is you walk along here, because if you go like, like I think like like right here or something where my mouse pointer is, you'll get the lock screen, and you can avoid that by just by just hugging this wall here, and then slowly going over this old door here, and behind the dumpster, which is like you'll see it, and you'll cue, uh goat eyes little quest that he wants you to do which you'll never do for him and then you can leave from the uh, from the right and it saves quite a bit of time because you have to fight those schoolboys and schoolgirls and cheerleaders and stuff and you gotta fight a couple blarts and a new enemy Linda from double dragon fame see I accidentally grabbed Linda there and that yeah so let me just go back here Oh, whoops. Yeah, so if you walk along here and try not to get into the uh, lock screen, and then you come across uh, Godai, you can skip uh, this first section of Uptown. It's same here. Um, I, I don't know exactly how to skip this, so I don't even bother with it. I've done it exactly once and it was off screen. I was like, oh my god. But then I got killed by uh, Hibari because I sucked against Hibari back in the day. But yeah, you can skip this too. So, And I think, uh, I haven't watched a lot of it, but I think you like go around, go along this. And behind here you talk to Yoko. And then you keep going here and then you'll avoid the uh, enemies but it's really difficult to do because you have this trash can in your way and it's like just really difficult and have no interest in doing it but there's Yoko and whatever how do these side characters just sit there and watch while you fight it's like what the hell man can't you just jump in a little bit so you fight a whole bunch of cheerleaders and it's at this point in the game where enemies can kind of crowd the screen and things can get pretty hectic um if you're new to this run and you want to actually try it out, uh, try not to get too greedy when fighting enemies. Just take them out one at a time, you know, nice and easy. You don't have to go crazy, and you should be okay. By the way, the, t the split times with uh, Yamada, um, if you're really good, you'll get under 16 um, or even under 15, because if you'll do the if you do the patents and skip. Uh, if you're just starting out, go for like, go for under 18 minutes. Like, don't like, don't, don't hurt yourself if you didn't do that. If you didn't, if you went over 18 minutes on your auto. So now Cart Mart, you want to buy Plumerinos and you want to buy Hot Blooded Boys. You should have this kind of money just by fighting and beating your auto. Um, yeah, so you should be alright. I almost buy Bounty Last, whoops. You get two speed and two attack from each of those games, respectively. So, very nice. Yeah, and over here, just run in a straight line. Don't grab anything, none of that crap. So here's a, here's an easy uh, skip from uh, for Hibari's uh, the Hibari building. So you go in here and you wait until you get some dialogue. As soon as you get to as soon as you get the dialogue. Run out, and you'll skip a lock screen there. Very easy skip, anyone can do it. There's Hasabe and Mommy again. Watch out, because there's a Sabu statue behind him. Uh, you don't want to break it, or else you'll get the little tutorial screen about the Sabu statue. See what I did there, was I let that uh, cheerleader lay there. Um, that's because... When you get to, I think, level 4 or 5, you get an attack called Human Weapon. Which means if you if you tap the uh, weak attack button on an enemy who is downed, you'll pick them up. And you won't be able to uh, do what you need to do to uh, 
get a job. So, get a job on Linda. I don't know why I get that uh, money from her, but whatever. Boy Toys this is the first Boy Toys shop. You want to get the toy alarm, and that's it. What you can also do if you want, if you really don't feel confident in this game, is you can uh, you can keep whatever you buy that increases your stats and just use them later if you need like recovery. Uh, that's usually not really necessary because you'll level up plenty. And when you level up, you get all your health back anyways. Yeah, if you're too far inside of an enemy, you will not be able to do a juggle well. So you make sure you're at a decent uh, distance away, but not too far away. Usually like right next to the enemy you want to juggle is pretty good. That's a good little distance here. So here's where two-handed weapon can actually be useful. So these cheerleaders are, they, they've appeared like halfway off the screen. It's possible to juggle them with this two-handed weapon. And that can produce a little bit more damage than your uh, volley uh, set or nutcracker. Uh, is it really recommended? Probably not. I don't see top runners do it, but I just do it just because it's fun. See there, I just juggled the cheerleader for two shots with that trash can. So now I know she's like close to done. I like how they call it one of the cheerleaders, Chara. Like, makes you wonder where Frisk is. <laughs> Undertale reference. Yeah, that truly did two cartwheels. I was like, oh my god. At this point in the game, don't even bother getting money from any enemies. You don't need it anymore at all. Same here with this bat. Um, normally, I wouldn't really care about it. But these pumps are... Like, not even on the screen. So you can bounce them against the wall with your, with your bat. Because the bat does an instant knockdown. So you can juggle with it. That's any weapon, really. See right there, I hit him a couple times and also the, the bats are very like flimsy so they'll break in like three shots. So instead of just rearranging it and just putting it in the corner, just knock these guys out with it. In most other cases you're going to want to just throw it away or throw it somewhere or whatever. Same here with the volleyball. See these wrestlers? So... You can juggle them with this volleyball if you're if you're good enough. Like right there. And weapons in this game actually do some decent damage. <laughs> but I see I just kind of put it to the side because now I know they're almost done anyway, so it didn't matter. By the way, the wrestlers in this game are all named after actual pro wrestlers. I found that to be pretty funny. Using the shuffle against these blarts. I was able to juggle that one that appeared to the far left so much that I knocked him like I almost took him out in one little juggle with it. Which made things a little bit easier in the in the upcoming part of this screen so it also got him to walk to the other side of the screen which I thought was pretty good because now it allowed me to focus on the other uh, on the other uh, blart so you might I mean you might want to get the money from some of these enemies but not all of them that Linda will always run up to you and attack you so that's completely telegraphed. So what you should do is just block it and then just beat her ass. Easy to juggle. It's only one enemy. It's good stuff. So here's what I do with the yo-yo. The yo-yo is actually one of the best weapons in the game. Because you can juggle the crap out of enemies with it. And it does a lot of damage. So like right there, right there. And see, it's doing really good crowd control because... Combinations of uh, combinations of cheerleaders, cheerleaders in combination with anybody in this are like horrible, cause 
they'll distract you, they'll get away from you, and then all of a sudden they'll appear right behind you, but then you'll be working on a different set of enemies, and all of a sudden you're surrounded and you're going to get knocked around. So I like to use the yo-yo there. Yeah, I didn't really have much, have good timing there. But I wanted to kind of crowd control a little bit. And here's Skullmageddon. What I thought was Papyrus at the time. I was like, when I played this casually, I was like, is that Papyrus? But no, it's Skullmageddon from, apparently from Double Dragon Neon. Yeah, you want to watch out for those pomps, because they will prevent you from entering that, uh, What's it called? Um, elevator. So make sure you get the uh, toy alarm at Boy Toys if you haven't gotten it before the Hibari building. Now here we are, and I accidentally fell down there. I forgot about that. So as you can see, even if even even though this run PB'd, it's still like not optimized at all. I still make tons of mistakes. Yeah, and these cheerleaders and uh. This Linda, pretty easy to beat. You can actually throw him over the edge and just take him out permanently. So, you can do a skip here called the Hibari skip. Uh, Bahamut, um, Bahamut X, who actually is a follower of this channel, uh, discovered it. Um, what you do is you, you put the cat on the table right there. And you find the... Uh, you find the spot that triggers that, and then you very quickly enter this door, and then you fight Hibari. And if you do it right, when you fight Hibari, you'll have the uh, you'll have the chain link uh, border, um, denoting that it's a locked screen. But of course, it's locked because you're fighting Hibari. And then after you fight Hibari, uh, this game doesn't recognize that you've it thinks that you've cleared the locked screen before fighting Hibari. So. Uh, that's a skip that you, that's a difficult skip that isn't really, you know, not really recommended for new players. See, like, I messed it up because I had no idea where to put the cat. I had no idea what to do with it, so, yeah. Yeah. And since I know I'm on PB pace, I kind of use that shuffle just for some crowd control before doing my little juggle thing. Yeah. This was not a good... Uh, pre Hibari room at all. I'm messing up a lot. Yeah, now I'm like enough at the shovel. And you fight a whole bunch of schoolgirls and a Linda here. So, yeah. Schoolgirls can get pretty nasty uh, in the middle to the end of this run. Just because uh, they're really fast and and they execute, they execute their moves like the fastest among all the enemies in this game. In that they don't really telegraph it. Alright, so Hibari. Hibari is also a difficult boss. Um, and she's very random. Hibari is extremely random. Um, so much so that you'll... you it, It's possible to run the clock by whole minutes fighting her. So in order, so in order to hit her more than once, you have to get her on the ground. There are two ways you can do this. The first is to land a flying kick, is to land a flying strike on her while she's, uh, you know, firing her bullets or doing her other things that she does from the air. Uh, the second way to get her on the ground is to wait until she summons her little, uh, I don't know, knife pen thing, paintbrush, I don't know what the hell to call it, uh, Oh, sewing, yes, yeah, sewing knife thing. I don't know. Sewing needle. Sewing needle. And have it bounce off the wall and have it hit her. Now, if you're very, very new, you don't want to take these risks I'm taking here. But I was able to get her down. And then once she's down, just hit her with the spin kick or the uh, hop knee as many times as you can before uh, she recovers. The spin, kick, the spin kick and the hop knee do a lot of damage. Hop knee if you're a Misaka. Yeah. Nice. And there we go. And that puts her in her second phase. Uh, the ads that uh, 
Hibari summons. Uh, they fight very defensively. I mean, they just fight very defensively, and they're just really aggressive anyways. I managed to get her down because I read, and uh, because she was pretty much very nice to me. Like, yeah. Sometimes Hibari will do a thing where she'll fire, like, bullets in, like, a ridiculous uh, pattern. And you won't have the iframes or whatever to uh, get there. But... As you can see, she's in really good. She's in really good positions here. This is a very good Hibari fight. Yeah. What she'll do a lot of the times, a lot of the time, most of the time, is she will. Uh, you'll run over to her, and then she'll teleport to like a different part of the screen. See, I messed up there, but it didn't matter because, because she was slow. I messed up there, but it didn't matter because she lined herself up perfectly, and this is a really good Hibari fight. The Hibari fight is one fight where you might want to stockpile some stuff, just in case you get low on uh, health. Uh, as you can see, I did get some health knocked out of me. It's very possible to die against Hibari um, if you are, if you're too reckless. Uh, but yeah, so. Very good. And there you go. And see, it's right here that I equipped the uh, makeup kit and the love letter. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to equip both of those. <laughs> So if I did, I'd be at a much uh, higher pace because I wouldn't have to hit the enemies so much in order to beat them. So Now we want to go back to Boy Toys and buy the noise figure. That increases all of your stats and maximizes your health. Really good. Now to go to downtown without getting into a whole bunch of uh, lock screens, like that's what would happen if you were to follow Hibari. Um, you can get there from a construction site. And when you go here, yeah, I accidentally entered that sub-screen, I don't know why. Now I want to use your turbo juices. Now, when you get to this screen, you want to buffer right. If you don't, you'll get into a lock screen. Because you'll go right here, and, and in seconds, you'll get dragged into a lock screen. So... I'm going to say this again one more time. It's how to skip this little area. It's how to skip the lock here. Again, it's very easy. It's academic. You just got to learn. You just got to remember it. So you enter here. As soon as you see the screen transition, you go ahead and buffer right. And sometimes you'll uh, skip that dialogue. And you want to go down too. And go all the way on the bottom of the screen because if you go here or anywhere above, we'll say, I think like right here or something, you'll trigger a uh, go die and then you'll have, uh, you'll get, he'll do, you know, he'll tell you, he'll, God damn it. You'll do a quest for him. And then, uh, as you're going to a Bobo, uh, you'll get into a lock screen. So you want to avoid that by avoiding uh, Godai there. Yeah. Everything else is pretty academic. Just do that. Walk where you can. Go down here. You want to talk to this kid. Naritaka. You want to kind of lure the enemies away from this store that you're supposed to go to. To pay lots, because... If you don't, the enemies can gang up on you pretty bad. I used to struggle with that a lot. You want to buy the aloe drink and the grapples. You go here and you use your second turbo juice to leap over that. And I kind of fumbled it a little bit. You want to get to the end of this. Wait for the dialogue. And then head back to where you came. Talk to this dude. 
and you fight the zombies. Uh, if you take too long against the zombies, you will get KO'd. You will get killed. Because... This. So don't take your time against the zombies. Pay attention to where they're spawning, which ones spawn first. This way you can take them out quickly. And use your flying shots too because they don't, uh, there's no, uh, they don't retract, uh, because your flying shot doesn't retract. Like a standing attack does. And you can use your flying uh, heavy attack if you want with um, either character, but I don't. Uh, I've seen some top runners do that, but I don't. And there you go. Very easy. And now you gotta talk to the guy again. And now we can go fight a Bobo. So, different from the other bosses in this game, uh, you can actually juggle a Bobo like a regular enemy. Um, apparently, in this new version of the game that I'm playing, he counters a lot less. Uh, in older versions, he would counter almost everything you did. So, just, so just juggle a Bobo like you usually do. When he gets up, he will counter and he will fly at you. So just go ahead and uh, dodge that as much as you can. You want to keep your health up as much as possible. So the second phase, he'll punch down. Uh, that'll do damage to you if you are not in the air when he does it. So make sure you get yourself in the air when he punches down. See, and there too, I kind of slipped up. Let him hit me. I also made a mistake there. Um... I was supposed to let a Bobo grab the uh, rock thing and then hit him. Yeah, I'm messing up a lot against a Bobo. <laughs> yeah, and I messed up pretty bad. So here, this is why you need to have full health. It's much faster for you to get hit by this than to run away from it. But, look how bad my health is. And if he lands this attack that he's doing, uh, he takes off, I think, about like this, mount, this much health. So, I think I do get hit by it. Uh, I think I do get hit by it, but I don't really know for sure. I don't get hit by that. <laughs> but if you're an absolute beginner, I mean, just go ahead and, yeah, see, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, like, playing very badly against a Bobo. Like, it's not good. But it beat him either way. And I lose about six, seven seconds. Just because I didn't do that great. But I'm, like... Well in the PB pace now. I know my I know my life splits like pixelated. I don't know why, man. Wow. I don't know why the record is really bad. Horrible, horrible, horrible quality. So now you want to use your third and final turbo juice. Jump across that. Just go in a straight line. You don't have to go up or down or anything like that. And now we get one of the most challenging lock screens here. So, when you juggle enemies, you're usually able to juggle them, juggle them as much as possible. It's not like that here, because enemies will bounce off of like a hidden ceiling or something like that on your second go-round with, with, with the juggle. So you gotta kind of let them fall, and then you gotta concentrate on different enemies. Uh, crowd control is very important here. Um, if, if too many enemies are in your way, or if you're in the way of too many enemies... You're going to get knocked around and it's not going to end well. Because um, as many as five or I think six even enemies can uh, be on the screen at once. And this screen introduces two new uh, enemies. The Terminators, which are those guys. That you see right there. Little Terminator looking dudes. Uh, they hit really hard and they use explosives and stuff. And also the Punks, which is that 
got the Mohawk and the Hammer. Uh, their hammer can do the most damage of any, like, generic in the game. Like, it's really bad. So don't let them get too... Good with you. So here's another skip that's pretty, that's fairly easy. To do it, I usually lure this uh, cheerleader and this uh, schoolgirl down here. And then you want to jump onto this uh, little platform, this chic buffet platform thing. And jump here. And now you want to hug this wall. And hug that, hug that, hug that. Because if you go down, even a few pixels, you're going to get dragged into the lock screen here. So, if you mess it up, you can always start and restart if you want. So, jump onto that. And I would recommend against running. Don't do that. And drop down. Now you're good. You can even go to the dojo if you want and buy some more uh, stuff. You have plenty of money at this point, so you can buy whatever you want. But again... I don't find the nest. I don't find the. I don't find it necessary to get any skills other than the. Uh, other than the volley uh, set, slash, um, uh, nutcracker, or the uh, spin kick slash the hop knee. Like they're just not important to me at all. So it's this area in the game, Ocean Heights, where you can do a ton of skips. Um, First of all, you want to talk to uh, Burnoff there. And then you want to save and quit because you'll get a whole bunch of dialogue and it'll run the clock like crazy. And so you want to avoid that. So you start and restart there. Now, the first of what I call the Ocean Heights trifecta of skips. Um, the first one being here, Lucky, at the uh, fish market. Uh, first of all, you want to buy uh, the garlic gelato and use it immediately. And up to three lasagna. Depends on how confident you are with fighting and uh, how and what your pace is. Uh, I knew that this was going to PB, so I didn't take any chances and I bought, I think, three lasagna. I bought two. Now, uh, if you're new, then just trigger the lock screen and get it over with. Just go to the middle of the fish market and fight all the pumps. It's fine. It'll be a whole bunch of pumps. But if you want to skip it, you want to get into this corner here and just hug those corners and go in there. This is the easiest of the uh, trifecta. And you can skip this too, uh, going back to it, but... I'll save that explanation for later. You gotta fight a whole bunch of blarts here. Blarts, uh, a couple schoolboys and a couple of uh, pomps. Using the fish can juggle. It can also, it also does really good crowd control. Which you're gonna need against the uh, blarts. Uh... For some reason, the Blart's just getting really nasty towards the end of the game. Uh, yes, he accidentally picked up that schoolboy. And when you have... No, I actually got, no, then I got stunned by one of them. Uh, if, you, if you're carrying a weapon or an enemy, uh, you can't defend. So, <laughs> you carry an enemy, you're going to get hit. If you know that someone's coming at you. Which is why I don't want to use weapons and stuff in this game. Because you can't really defend yourself with it. And you especially don't want to be picking up other enemies. Because you can't even do any crowd control with those at all. So you talk to this concierge here. And now we're done with the aquarium. So there we go. Now I just need to go back to... Place. So you can skip this here by walking along this and it and like and you drop down at a certain angle or whatever and it skips it. I don't know how to do it yet. Uh I got figured out. 
the guitar, what I have in my hand here, this weapon, it's an interesting weapon in that, like, if you throw it, it won't bounce off of an enemy. It'll just go through every enemy that hits. So, you can use that to your advantage. Uh, in this particular lock screen, I like to keep these, those enemies on the right there because the roller coaster will hit them. And that, uh, that gives me some good crowd control. See, like, right there. So now these schoolboys are kind of distanced from me, so it's really good. And there you go. That was brilliant. And then I take them out. Oh, okay. So I shouldn't have used that guitar. And yeah, you can. The thing about throwing weapons in this game is you can hit yourself with them, which is pretty bad. So here's where the fish market skip gets pretty tricky. So if you just go up to a uh, display of Noise's favorite food, the screen will lock and the pomps are going to be coming at you. So what I do is I'll lure the pomps to the bottom, trigger the dialogue that has a that has Noise's favorite food, and then immediately get away from the pomps. You can run there, go along these corners, and along this corner, because if you go anywhere further, if you go anywhere further, you will you will trigger the lock. Like right here, I think. Like right next to Kyoko's shoe. Like you'll trigger the lock screen like literally right there. It's pixels away. So. Again, if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Just fight through it and you'll be okay. It runs the clock by a minute and some change. And there you go. And this next one's really easy. As soon as you see noise dog acquired, save and quit. It'll prevent the screen from locking and you'll be able to just move on. By the way, with the fish market, um, if you want to rest don't if you want to restart because you didn't get the skip, uh, it's gonna soft lock your game. The game will not recognize that you uh acquired, that you got the uh, name of uh, noise's favorite food. So, again right here, stick into these corners, very good, and there you go, you have to perform these skips a lot. So, and if you mess up one, then you've messed up, if you mess up one go round of it, then you've messed it all up. So, that's why I'm trying to maximize my time without these skips, because once I... Once I've done that, I'm going to, have to start really grinding out PBs in this game. And if I don't get skips, well, it's a reset <laughs> in Ocean Heights. Or anywhere for that matter, you know? So, again, I didn't get the skip, so I can just go past here. I accidentally grabbed that trash can. Whoops. And again, you have to do the skip every time. You can't just let yourself off the hook after not getting the skip. Fortunately, it's a very wide uh, trigger there, so. Like, the easiest of those three skips is definitely the uh, fish mark. It's one I've gotten of the three that are really difficult. Yeah. So before fighting noise, we want to equip the frill bra and the scissors. The frill bra gives you more iframes, and the scissors gives you more attack power. This will let you uh, do a little bit more damage to noise and it will uh, allow you to be invincible for longer against her uh, against her attacks here against her little guitar hero thing so what you want to do against noise is so each verse of her song is going to give you this guitar hero game where you have to avoid the notes <laughs> and when the verse is over you want to intentionally get hit by the notes. This way, when she jumps off of the stage and to attack you, you'll have iframes and you can just wail on her. That's the goal of this fight. Um, I think I'll use a lasagna in this fight uh, because it can uh, do a lot of damage to you. It, it can be a bore of attrition. Yeah, see, I was... Uh, I was very late. 
Uh, if noise is over towards the top of the stage, use your spin kick. If she's towards the bottom, use the uh, uh, the set. This way you're not like trying to, you know, go up when you should be going down and go down when you should be going up. Yeah. I'll swap out Kyoko's attacks for Masako's if you're using Masako. The second verse you can avoid most of the notes. The first verse you should be able to get hit. You should be able to not get hit at all until the intentional hit. The second one, you'll get hit a few times. The third one, you're gonna get knocked around like crazy. I was uh, I was interrupted by something there by my, by my bowling buddy. It's funny. I was watching Mr. Me and my bowling buddy were watching were watching uh, Mr. Deeds in the background while playing while I was playing this. <laughs> The Sandler movie, Mr. Deeds. Yeah, if Noise hits you with her guitar, she'll do a lot of damage, as you just saw. So that's why you want to have all those nice iframes with uh, the um, the frill raw. So yeah, I get a little too aggressive here. Um, when Noise is doing that little thing where she's flying around the screen and summoning fans to to hit you, just just let her do it. Yeah, see, and I was not confident that this run was going to keep going if I didn't use a lasagna, so I used a lasagna. Um, my goal is to not get, not use any recovery items at all during this entire run. And I don't need the master skips for that. Uh, makes no difference. I don't think I need to, so. As you can see, I'm kind of avoiding most of the notes here, but not all of them. Yeah, don't be discouraged if you get hit by a whole bunch. It's fine. As long as you have lots of recovery items. If you're carrying at least two lasagnas into this fight and the uh, final boss, you'll be fine. I ran out of iframes there, and that cost me. See, if I didn't use that lasagna, would have gotten KO'd, run would have been over. So, yeah, don't... There's no shame in using a... Uh, a lasagna in this fight. Same with the fans. The fans, you have to hit them or else they will just, or they won't stun you, but they'll just knock you back and it'll be annoying. And I took her down. And I lost a lot of time. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I gained a lot of time. I don't know how, but I did. Okay. Because that was not a good, that was not a good noise fight. <laughs> not at all. All right. So after the noise fight, you want to uh, again like don't go in, don't go into the uh, pause menu yet because you'll get the map uh, telling you where to go. But you definitely want to equip your uh, you want to swap out your frill bra and your scissors uh, back for the makeup kit and the love letter. You want to do the fish market skip for the final time if you know how to do it. And now we want to go to, yeah, you can run past that uh, train, th uh, the uh, what's called roller coaster thing, but it's not easy. And now we're going to head to San Kai Tower. If you go near this dumpster, you'll get a Godai side quest, and that'll suck because you'll be forced to fight more enemies uh, during it. So just get as far away from that as you can. We did a parry there against that schoolboy, which was... Pretty cool. Yeah, see, I miscalculated when the schoolboys were going to attack. I knew they were going to attack, but I just didn't need. I just needed to know when. And apparently, I just did not get that right. So, it's a guessing game. It really is sometimes. Like right there. Like I knew that that schoolboy was going to try to attack, and again, I guess, uh, I guess the timing. The timing was just not right. So, fortunately, I'm juggling pretty good against the pomps. Very nice. Uh, San Kai Tower is pretty uh, straightforward. So, just lots of fighting. Gotta, learn, gotta know your juggles. Um, you gotta know which enemies are uh, the bigger threats. Um, even though all of them are, have, are uniquely threatening. 
Some are way more threatening than others. And this is very apparent in uh, Santa Clara Tower. So. Yeah, it kind of sucks when enemies beg for help. Okay. So, you're supposed to fight a big, massive lock screen against a whole bunch of Yakuza. Um, we're going to skip that. This is another very easy skip that anyone can do. So, you wait for the dialogue to kind of uh, play out. Otherwise, you won't be able to move. One thing that one thing you can do to kind of den to kind of uh, denote that you can actually do this skip is to kind of do what I'm doing here, which is kind of veer off the platform a little bit. And once you can go all the way to the right, do it. I prefer the I prefer to jump, but you can you don't need to jump. Uh, but it is it is more reliable to avoid the uh, lock screen. If you don't get that, you can probably just restart and try to get it again. That should be fine. Now this room right here, this, this can put you away if you're not careful. You need to learn your juggles and your crowd control. Because these enemies will come at you really bad. So with the Yakuza, the guy Yakuza's are a lot more threatening than the uh, Chick Yakuza's. Yakuza's. Um, the guy Yakuza's can do uh, Hadoukens, which can do ridiculous damage. About like a quarter to a third of your health bar, as you just saw. Um, the woman Yakuza's, I don't know why I keep saying Lakuza's. The woman Yakuza's can, uh, they do similar to the uh, cheerleaders where they will jump in the air and instead of kicking at you like the uh, cheerleaders do and doing a flying kick, the woman Yakuza will throw daggers at you. That one's a little more telegraphed and it doesn't nearly take as much, uh, the hitbox isn't nearly as big as the uh, male Yakuza's Hadoken, so it's easily... It, although it does just as much damage, it is definitely more avoidable. Yeah. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah, nice and easy against these enemies here. But you definitely want to group them up if you can and just start juggling like crazy. And the Yakuza are a lot more aggressive. And they don't really, uh, they don't telegraph too much. So you want to you want to keep your distance from them until you can group them in with other enemies and do it confidently, uh, which is what I just did there. If you can't tell, this is all chicks I'm fighting, and before the elevator, I was fighting all dudes. It's all the dude enemies. I th I found that to be pretty cool. See, I picked up that gambler chick. That's what that, that's what that cat thing I think is called. A gambler. I call them the gamblers because they throw cards and dice at you and stuff. Cat gamblers. Yeah. And here's the final... The final, uh, the final quest before fighting the final boss. That floor is electrified. It will hit you if you uh, if you walk over it while it's electrified. More zombies. These ones are actually easier because you have that volleyball in your hand. And it just it just goes right through them. The goal is to stay on that right side this way. You can go through that door immediately after fighting and taking out the zombies. And I'll go over here to the money laundering room. I find that to be hilarious. It's literally a money laundry. <laughs> You're going to fight a whole bunch of blarts here. And uh, they have an advantage on you because you're in a very close space here. So 
they can easily surround you and stun you and then just whoop on you. Uh, and they, for some reason, just do a lot of damage. <laughs> you know, fight about seven blarts and a pump. I don't know why that pump's in there. But once you get a good juggle going, it's easy money. You can use this whip uh, to distance yourself. Uh, it's a safer alternative. And I'm only doing that because I'm so low on health and I don't want to use another lasagna. Which I think I end up doing anyways. But I don't remember. So yeah. So I could have saved a lot more time here. But I didn't. And that's okay. <sighs> Only one more explosive to get. And it is over here. Same with this room. Uh, I just used that chair just to get it out of the way. Just to break it. And this way I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And it does a lot of damage. And I can juggle with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, if you're new to the run, or even if you're intermediate like I am, like, use weapons. Use the one-handed ones. They they can juggle enemies pretty well. I accidentally did the uh, dab there. Uh, you you'll you'll find you'll you'll find yourself doing that a lot. Uh, like as you're attempting to ground stomp the enemies. I accidentally picked them up. Yeah. You fight a lot of blarts here. It's crazy. For anyone who's like wondering why is he calling these these uh, security slash cops blarts, is just because I don't know. They just remind me of Paul Blart, that movie with Kevin James where he plays a mall cop. <laughs> it just as annoying. We'll say that. You can fight a whole bunch of Blarts and a couple of Yakuza over there. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Now just go all the way up to the top because you've found all the explosives. It's like I said, Samokai Tower is very straightforward. Once you've gotten past noise uh, and have gotten to the tower, you can pretty much rest easy because there's only one skip. Um, and it's not even that difficult to do. I accidentally grabbed that bat for some reason. <laughs> Just dropped it in front of the dude. Yeah, see, I got hit by the electrified four there. Now, if you're new to this run, if you've done this run like less than, we'll say, 10 times or whatever, um, or if you're like really struggling. Uh, carry a couple of lasagnas into the Sabuko fight because Sabuko is easily can be one of the easiest or one of the most difficult bosses in the run. Um, she counters a lot, so make sure you're landing just two light hits before uh, juggling. In between each phase, she'll sh she'll summon some yakuza. Uh, You can either try to beat them, and I think that saves a little bit of time, or you can just run around, and Sabuko will uh, jump off her little platform and, and kill them anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> so, right here, she'll disappear. You'll have to find the real Sabuko, and then hit her. In this case, it is... I couldn't find it. It was right there. Yeah, it was right there. So, if you can find it, very good. And you'll you'll be able to hit her, get some free shots. If not, she'll find it. She'll get a couple free shots on you. Fortunately, during the second phase, Sabuko is extremely squishy during the uh, second phase of this fight. So, and if yeah, if you can get the Yakuza into a juggle, just take him out, man. It saves you a little bit of time, a little bit, nothing crazy, but you'll save a little bit of time. So it's the third phase where. Sabuko gets like mean. So so she'll do one of these three little symbols here. She got the water one. So it just kind of increases her like countering rate. Yeah, she'll do that little water thing and it'll hit you and shit. 
It's very annoying. Randomly, too. So that prevented my juggle, which is really dumb. You definitely don't want to stay in one place when fighting Sabuko. Oh, that's one of the worst things you can do. Um, because if you do stay in one place, she's just going to teleport right to where you are and just start wailing on you. Again, if you're carrying at least two lasagnas in this fight, you can make as many mistakes as you as, as you want. And you'll still come out on top. You'll still be like... It'll still be an easy fight. The last phase, Sabuko can do some crazy shit. Uh, and she has... She has this, which means she'll, she'll do some fireballs, some stuff like that. I got a good juggle on her there. She teleports more, but it didn't matter. It's an easy fight. And the timing ends when you defeat Sabuko. And there you have it. 57 minutes and 55 seconds. Only using a few, uh... Only using a few uh, skips, so I pretty much didn't do any of the real major ones. Uh, and there was I made a lot of mistakes during this run too. So my goal is to improve upon this and go for under fifty five. Once I get, I think, 55 or even 50... I, I actually, let's go with under 56. Uh, so if I get like 55 and some change, then we'll be okay. Um, but yeah, as for City Girls, that's the new game category. Uh, sorry about the horrible, horrible, horrible um, quality. Sorry it has no sound. I wasn't able to use sound because I didn't want to uh, disturb my bowling buddy who I was uh, staying in the hotel room with so while we were watching you know the movie I was playing this and I was playing it on mute so that's why there's no sound I'm not going to submit this to, to speedrun.com I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to do that during the last day of March uh, that's going to be my last day of me playing this for 2022 until I come back to it in December of this year uh but yeah, so I have another month or two, or something, yeah, like a month and some change to uh, improve upon this run. I know I can do it, uh, and that'll be it. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop my stream now and uh, go and wrap up this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, go to my Twitch channel and follow me there. I do live streaming there and stuff like that. Um, speaking of that, my next next time I'm going to stream is going to be Saturday night. It's going to be a big stream. It's going to be Final Fantasy IX. Oh, yes. I'm going to actually schedule that right now in uh, Twitch. So that's going to be nice. I'm probably also going to do this game too. Uh, I might do it like marathon style. You know, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, all right. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Keep being awesome and take care.